Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about MDisk. What's MDisk, you cry? Well, MDisk is a relatively new kind of writable Blu-ray and DVD media that stores your data securely for a long period of time. Now, as you may know, traditional DVD and Blu-ray and CD discs, if you write data to them, it can be gone in a few years. It can be gone in a few months if you're unlucky and they aren't particularly good discs. But with MDisk, the data is supposed to be secure on the disc once you've written it for centuries, if not a thousand years. Now, you might be thinking, how so? What's the difference? Well, the difference is traditional writable media store the data using an organic dye whose properties are changed by a laser, and that dye can degenerate over time. But in MDisk, your data is stored using an inorganic, what they call rock-like layer into which the data is engraved, and that's supposed to have much greater longevity. So, in this video, I'm going to show you some MDisk hardware and media. We're going to test them out, test out compatibility, and then I'm going to do some very intensive data retention tests. Right, I thought I'd show you my uh, MDisk kit. What was a special MDisk kit, you cry? Of course there isn't. This is just the stuff I bought to get me into using MDisk. So let's have a look at some of this. Let's take it off there a second. First of all, let's start with the media. I've got some of the official Milleniata uh, MDisk BDR discs. These are 25 gigabyte discs, which store 25 gigabytes on, on the MDisk there. Uh, three of these in a packet with uh, nice little um, slimline cases. Let's get into that, see see what they're like. Get Mr. Knife in here. Yeah, down there. And hopefully get in, get rid of all the reflective stuff, makes it easier to see anyway. Uh, never looked at an M disc before, so this is very oh we've still got some left. There we are. And eventually, why can I never get into things ever? Because when I do it on camera. There we are. And inside here we've got a this is a, an M disc in its box and if I open it up we will hopefully see Woo! That's an M disc. I don't know if it's very excitingly different on, on, on the other side. We'll have a look. And yeah, it looks like a disc, doesn't it? But anyway, that's an M disc. That's supposed to last for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years when we put the data on it. As well, I've also got, as you can see, some verbatim M discs, exactly the same thing, slightly cheaper than the official Milleniata ones, uh, but they're now licensed for technology to other people. I needed more than three discs, so I thought I'll, I'll try some different ones from different manufacturers. I also got myself some uh, DVD discs. These are DVD-R from verbatim on, on, a, on a spindle because I want to do some uh, DVDs that hopefully will last a long time as well. And finally, I got a couple of Sharpies, a special two-pack and add-on from Amazon for writing on discs because I always think it's best to write with exactly the right pen on, on a disc, particularly if you want to keep it for a long period of time, you don't want to damage the thing. So we've got some Sharpies. Let's, let's get those out as well. Wild excitement here. It's a bit like M-Disc Christmas, isn't it? Again, I can't get into anything, but eventually we'll get a pen out. And these are, these are really exciting Sharpies because they've got the, uh, the uh, thick bit on one end and the, uh, the thin bit, hopefully. Off it off. Yes, on the other. Isn't that good? So they're for writing on our discs. Now, of course, to write the discs, we have to have something to write them with. It's worth noting that uh, you can write uh, the Blu-ray discs on any modern Blu-ray player. Should be able to write a Blu-ray M disc. That means any player made in the past sort of few years. But to write a DVD, you do need an M disc certified drive. And so, as you saw earlier on, I've got a big box here. And the big box is this uh, LG 16 times Blu-ray DVD write, although it certainly won't write M discs at a 16 times. So this is going to replace the drive I've got in my PC. I've never actually had a, a Blu-ray player or, or recorder before, so this is, is very exciting. I have actually got a DVD drive which will write M discs on my i3. I got that a few years ago. Never got a disc since, but I have got it on there. But this is actually rated to write M discs, so M discs there means it'll write DVDs, and because it'll do that, we know it'll also do the Blu ray discs. So let's just get into here. This is not terribly exciting. It's an optical drive. 
I remember when I first bought an optical drive from HP, it cost about £300, which would be, what, for three, four, or five hundred dollars Many, many, many years ago. Um, how it's changed, optical drives almost going out. Anyway, it comes with all sorts of stuff. Oh, it comes with cables. That's rather nice. Extra cables for my box of cables. And in here, we've got our um, Russell Russell. So many things here called Russell. This is our uh, LG drive for uh, writing M-Disc. So there we are. I've got all my exciting M-Disc stuff. I think it's probably time that we now go and actually mount this drive in a computer. Right, I have now fitted my LG Super Multi Blue BH16 into my video editing PC, which was just a matter of removing the old drive, slotting in my new one, connecting the Saturn power connectors, and putting the front back on the machine. I've also written my first Blu ray M disc, and for this I use ImageBurn, which is my favourite writing piece of software. You can download it for free, and I much prefer ImageBurn to some of the fancy software for writing optical discs, which sometimes comes bundled with drives, sometimes adds a lot to the price of the drive. I would always use ImageBurn to have a lot of control. Now, as you might know, a single sided Blu ray disc contains 25 billion bytes. And because one kilobyte is 1024 bytes, etc., that's actually about 23.28 gigabytes. And so I've written a disk which is almost at full, 22.97 gigabytes, pretty much full, to see how long it would take. And using this writer, which writes four times on an M disk, that's the maximum speed, it took about 23 minutes 47 seconds to uh, write the disk, and it took a 10 minutes and 41 seconds to verify it. So it's taken me about 35 minutes to write and verify about 23 gigabytes of data to this M-Disc Blu-ray, which I think isn't bad. I've also decided to write a DVD to see if it works and to check compatibility. I've written a video disc so I can try it on lots of different drives. And the first one I tried it on was my i3, which was bound to work, I guess, because it's an M-Disc certified drive. I also then tried the disc on a fairly new Sony DVD player and it worked absolutely fine. And I also tried it on this Sony DVD player, which was dug up with a recent archaeological excavation. I think it was made by the Romans. But surprisingly, the uh, M-Disc DVD worked on this as well. I even tried reading the disc on a very old IDE Samsung DVD drive connected to my netbook. And to my great surprise, that also worked. So although it is claimed that M-Disc is not entirely compatible with all existing DVD drives, my own experience is I couldn't find a drive that wouldn't read an M-Disc DVD. So, I've now told you what M-Disc is, we've looked at some hardware, we've checked it works, but I'm sure the big question on your mind, the ultimate question about M-Disc, is does a recording on an M-Disc last far longer than a recording on a traditional DVD or Blu-ray recordable disc. Now to check that out, we could of course get ourselves a time machine, something like this or something like this, and nip into the future a few hundred years and check out a disc we wrote today. But sadly, time machines don't exist. But what we can do is we could take ourselves an, an M-Disc, here's an M-Disc, look, it's an inkjet printable one side, shiny M-Disc on the other, and we could take a standard uh, DVD, this is a DVD M-Disc, and we could write onto each of these discs exactly the same image. And then what we could do, we could take these lovely discs and we could put them into these DVD containers into which I put some water and I've frozen that water. And then we could add some more water on the top and we could put those in the freezer and we could freeze it so we ended up with each disc absolutely frozen in a block of ice. And uh, here they are, this is our discs in Totally solid, frozen in ice. I'm, I'm wearing these lovely uh, designer purple rubber gloves because if I didn't, my uh, skin would be sticking to this. This is really very, very cold and very, very, very solid. Um, why have I frozen these discs in ice? Well, I'm trying to put the discs through the stresses that they really don't like. These sort of discs don't like moisture and clearly this is quite a high moisture level. They don't like extremes of temperature. They've been down to well under minus 20 degrees centigrade for many, many hours today. And they also won't like uh, high temperatures. And I'm gonna actually get them out of this ice, not by just letting them melt slowly over time, but by subjecting them to some boiling water. So let's go 
and try that. And uh, here we are, we've got our frozen disc ready to be uh, rapidly unfrozen. I've got my wooden spoon around in case I need to move them around if I can't keep them on screen properly. And I'll now try a bit of boiling water. Oh, that's working. That's definitely working. I would say, of course, whatever you do, do not try this at home. This is not a, this is not something to be tried unless you're incredibly stupid. But there we are. We've now got our discs very, very rapidly uh, unfrozen. It'll be interesting to see if I now dry them off whether there's any data left on either of these discs. So, here I am again. It's now 11 days since I did my disc freezing tests. And the first thing to tell you is, this is the second time I've made the end to this video. There you are, look, that's the first end to the video I made over there. And in that first ending, what I said to you was I'd tested the disc, this was shot on the day of the test, and both had still worked absolutely fine. So what I decided to do was to store them, not in their little envelopes, but to store them under water. So I put them into a DVD uh, container, I put some water in, and I stored them on my kitchen windowsill. And the idea was to come back to them in many months' time to see if there was any change to either disc. And so then I went off to do my edit. But during the edit, I thought, well, what's happened to those discs? So this was nine days after I'd actually put them in, into that water there, after the freezing, I just had to get them out. And you can see the disc here. And as you might see, the surface of the traditional media has gone slightly strange. If we're looking close up, you can see very much the M disc still looks as it did, but there's all sorts of weird and wonderful coloured patterns on the traditional DVD media. And it won't surprise you to know when I did some verification tests, the uh, M disc verified fine, but the traditional DVD didn't. And I think what has happened there is that moisture has got in through the edge of the disc uh, to corrupt the uh, organic dye, and therefore there was no data readable. Now that was two days ago. This is now 11 days since the final test of the freezing test, and the disc now had more time to actually dry out. And as you might see here, the traditional media now looks more like it's supposed to, and both discs now verify fine. So, what have we learned? Other than the fact that if you write with a Sharpie on the inkjet printable surfaces, it comes off if you store your discs in water, which is uh, perhaps surprising. We've also learned that if you have DVD discs which have been water damaged and you think the data's all gone, it's worth waiting several days to see if it comes back again. In terms of M-Disc, I think we have proved that an M-Disc is more robust than a traditional media. Yes, the data came back on this disc, but I don't think I'd trust it over time. Having seen that colour pattern change, this is not a media I'd want to be using for important purposes. So I think the test has proved more than I thought it would. I was quite shocked with the change on the surface of this disc. We've seen that M-Disc does seem to be more robust for archival media storage. So, that's now it for the end of this video, which has become a bit more of a gargantuan undertaking than I expected. If you've enjoyed it, please press the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.